in this video i will show you step by step how to apply for a us visa does not matter which kind of visa you are applying to either if it's f1 or f2 or h1 h4 l b1 b2 any kind of visa the step the process is same all you have to do is start from filling up the ds-160 form and then you go on to cj website deposit the money and then you book the time slot for your visa interview so in this video i'll show you everything step by step So this is the website uh, US Department of State where you will apply your US visa. Basically this is the DS-160 form that we are going to fill in a moment. The first thing you have to do is select where you are going to apply, right? So I'm going to apply in New Delhi. Enter the code below. So I'm going to enter this and start a new application. As soon as you click on that, you have to agree basically all these terms and conditions and make sure you copy your application id number All right so i'm going to print it save it on my computer and now then the security question and continue so this is personal information page one where you write your surname here and this is very important make sure you write it exactly what is on your passport so i'll write my given name my surname and full name in the native alphabet it does not apply here in my case okay have you ever used other names in my case no you can write here whatever your case is if you have changed your name in the past you can say yes here do you have a tally code that represents your name no by the way if you need any help it's written here the definition of tally code tally codes are four digit code numbers that represent character in some known roman alphabet names okay so this is a help here sex male marital status you can write if you are single you can write single if you're married you can write married and date and place of birth it should be exactly as on your passport okay so i will write some dummy dates here go to page number two personal information two country of origin so india do you hold or have you held any nationality other than one indicated above on nationality if you have been a citizen of any other country you can write yes otherwise say no are you a permanent resident of a country region other than the country region in the origin uh, nationality indicated of up if you have say yes if you haven't say no national identification number this is a national identification number where you can write your tax number or pan card number right so if you have one if you don't have pan card you don't have any identification number just say does not apply u.s social security number so this does not apply to all the candidates because this ds-160 form is common remember in the beginning i said it's common for all visa types for j o h1 h4 f all visa type it's common form so if you have already been in u.s and working in u.s or have worked in the u.s it means you must have to have the u.s social security number but if you are applying u.s visa for the first time it means you will never ever had u.s social security number in that case you will say no most of the case 99 percent of the time the f1 um, students who are applying visa f1 visa for the first time they will say no here next is u.s taxpayer id number so again this is something that first time f1 students will not have but if you are let's say dependent and you have already lived in united states you might have us taxpayer number or tax id number in that case you can enter your tax id number here but if you are f1 student you just write no here so it does not apply go to next now next is the travel information purpose of your trip in us so based on what option you choose here the next couple of questions will be different for example if you choose f category here the next questions will be slightly different if you choose h which is a working visa the next couple of questions will be different so for the sake of this video i'll just choose h which is a working visa right so i'll just choose h here and by the way 
as I explained earlier that this DS-160 form is common for all visa types. You can see here all the visa types are listed here. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, I, K, M, N, O, P, Q, S, R, all kind of visas are listed here. For the sake of this video, again, I'm going to choose H visa. It will ask me further to specify what kind of H visa. So if you are H4 dependent on H1 visa, then you will choose H4. In my case, I'll just go with H1B visa. Okay. And it will ask me a uh, petition number. All H1B visa holders have their petition number and that is they have their I-797. On the I-797 form, they have something called VAC number. Here you have to put your VAC number. All right. So I'll just write a dummy VAC number for now. Have you made specific travel plans? If you have, say yes. If no, you can just write say no. This is nothing wrong in that. Intended date of arrival. So I want to arrive here on 1st of August 2022. Intended length. I want to stay here two years, let's say. Address where you will stay in US. So if you know where you're going to stay here, you can put the address. If you are going to stay in hotel, you can put the hotel address. If you're going to stay with your friend, you can put your friend's address. If you're going to stay with your relative, you can put that. Right. So basically, I have entered all my address here, fake address here. And then you enter who is paying for your trip. Right. So if you are paying out of your pocket, you can say self. Or if you are F1 student and your family, parents, mom, dad, someone is paying for you. You can write other person all right so in my case i'll just go with self person traveling with you is anyone traveling with you no i'm alone next have you ever been in us no have you ever issued have you ever been issued us visa no have you ever been refused us visa no has anyone ever filled immigration petition yes then they will ask you explain so you can write my company filed for me okay and go to next so home address you can write your home address indian home address here okay so i'm gonna fill up all my Indian home address here. So I'll just put some dummy home address here. Is your mailing address is same as your home address? So you can say yes, or if you are, let's say your mailing address different, you can say no, right? Phone number, I'll just write primary phone number. I don't have any secondary phone number. So I'll just write no, no here does not apply. And have you used any other phone number in the past five years? Have, say yes, otherwise say no. Email address, you can write your email address here. Have you used any other email address in the last five years? No. Social media profile. And this is something new. So nowadays, US consulate is becoming more and more uh, conscious about collecting the social media information. So you have to write here your social media, basically your Facebook, Twitter, uh, any other social media information here, LinkedIn, right? So let's select one to Facebook. So my Facebook profile is I can add another one. Let's say I want to add LinkedIn. All right, so I added my Facebook, I added my LinkedIn. If you have any other social media profile, you can add one more and you know keep adding, right? Do you wish to provide information about your presence on any websites or applications you have used past within five years? You can write here if you use YouTube or you can, you know, write whatever you want to say, but for me for now i will just say no next is the passport oh oh country right yeah i forgot to enter the country all right so here you have to enter your passport information basically you can choose what kind of travel document you're gonna enter here so official diplomatic other let's say i have a regular passport and most of the people have regular passport so just write passport regular and your passport number here make sure this is correct okay and then you enter 
uh, country, which country issued your passport and where was the passport travel document issued. So it was issued in New Delhi, state, state province not shown here. So I'll say New Delhi here. New Delhi and country was India and issue date is 1st January 2015 and expiration is 1st January 2025. And make sure these dates match exactly as in your passport. Have you ever lost your passport or had it stolen? No. If you have, just say yes. But in my case, I say no. So next is the US point of contact information. So here, if you are, if you know someone in the US, just write his name. It could be your friend, your parent, your relative, or anyone, right? If you don't know, if you are going for, let's say, uh, as a F1 student, so you can write your school officials contact information here okay so that's okay so it says relative spouse friend business associate employer school official so you can choose school official if you are applying for f1 visa but in my case i'll just write friend Okay, and I have entered a dummy information about my friend. Okay, he's living at 789 Martel Street, Malta, New York, and his phone number and his email address. If you don't know the email address, you can just say does not apply. That's okay. You can say does not apply also. Okay, go next. All right, so here you have to enter information about your family, basically your relatives. Okay, so first column is the, the first section is about your father's, and you can write for your father's name, given name, date of birth. If you know, if you don't know, just say I don't know. And is your father in the US? If it's if he is, just say yes, otherwise say no. And same as the mother. Okay, and do you have any immediate relative, not including your parents, in the United States? If you have, just say yes. If no, just say no. Do you have any other relative in the United States? Just pick your choice. I'll say no. I don't have any relative. Yes. So this one is family information, tip particularly spouse. So you have to write all the spouse information. As I said earlier, because when I started the form, I said my marital status is spouse. That's why uh, they are asking this information. But if I would have chosen here single, then I would not see this uh, particular section about spouse here in DS-160 form. So that's why, as I said earlier also, DS-160 questions will vary based on your choices or the answers in the first page. So it will slightly vary from person to person. And this is spouse place of birth, New Delhi, country India, and spouse's address. So you can just write same as home address. Oh, okay. So as you can see, after a certain time, the website will automatically log you out. This is basically for the security reason, all right? So what you have to do is go back in the first link, click on that and retrieve your application. So let's go back. It will ask you same questions and uh, you have to basically log back in. Now you enter this security code and then you retrieve your application okay so because you want to start continue filling up the same ds160 form that you started earlier right so you click on retrieve application and it will ask you the application id which i have and then ask you the couple of questions All right, so after you retrieve your application, you can see it started from the same point, right, where we left off. So you have filled up all the information, family information, spouse, and then you go to work. Right? So primary occupation as this form is H1B visa holder. So I will choose my primary occupation as engineer. But if you are applying for F1 visa, you can choose student or, you know, whatever is applicable to you. So as soon as you enter the engineering in the occupation, it will further ask you these questions. So present employer, present employer or school name, right? So I will write Intel 
you can write a full name of the company all right so intel and a street address this is the head office of that company so i'll just write head office is in san jose blah 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 and then you have to write here the start date start date of your employment let's say you let's assume that you joined january 1 2020 and what is your monthly uh salary so in us dollars roughly let's say eight thousand dollars and briefly describe your duties i would really recommend here don't write too much here just write one or two lines so i'll just write software engineer and then go to next page so next page is previous work education training and information and the first question is were you previously employed if you were say yes if you weren't say no have you attended any education institute institution at secondary level or above so basically it's asking if you have any university degree after 10 plus 2 right so since this application is for h1b visa and uh, and usually h1b visa holders have at least bachelor's degree or master's or phd right so i will say yes then it will ask you the details of that institution right so i'll fill up all the information right so i'll write everything about my uh uh my course okay and if you have master's degree or any other degree you can add one more degree okay you can add as many as you want go next and this is additional information about the work education and training do you belong to a clan or a tribe so pick i will say no language so i know hindi so i'll just pick hindi if you want to add more language Malayalam, Telugu, any any other language, just add one more language. Have you traveled to any country regions within the last five years? I have never. Okay. Have you belonged to or contributed to or worked for any profession, social, charitable organizations? I said, if you yes, you can say yes, I know. Do you have any specialized skills, training, such as for firearms, explosive, nuclear? Just be honest. Give all the honest answers here because if you conceal the information you might get trouble while you face the visa interview so my recommendation is be honest and give all the answers to the best of your ability do you have a communicable disease i don't have a disease do you have a mental physical disorder i don't have a disorder are you or have you ever been drug abused no uh, never been a drug abuser security question part two have you ever been arrested i never been arrested have you ever violated engaged in conspiracy to violate or any law regulators no i have never been have are you com coming to the united states to engage in prostitution or unlawful commercialized vice no have you ever been involved in or do you speak or do you seek to engage in money laundering no have you ever committed or conspired to commit a human trafficking no have you ever knowingly aided abetted assisted or colluded with the individual who has committed or conspired to swear human trafficking no are you the spouse son daughter of an individual who has committed the human trafficking no right so just be honest part three do you seek to engage espionage, sabotage, export, extracultural, illegal activity? No, I am not. Do you seek to engage in terrorist activities? No, I am not. Have you ever or do you intend to provide financial assistance to other terrorists? No. Are you a member of a representative terrorist organization? No. Are you the spouse, son, daughter of a terrorist organization? No. Have you ever ordered, incited, assisted otherwise in genocide? No. Have you ever committed order inside or otherwise participated in a torture? No. Have you ever committed order in, in the killing of the... No. Have you ever engaged in the recruitment or use of the child soldiers? No. Have you ever... Have, uh, have you, while serving a government office, been responsible for directly carrying out any time problem? No. Have you ever been directly involved in establishment, force, population control of women? No. Have you ever been directly involved in the coercive transplantation of human organs no and the last part is four have you ever sought obtained assisted other to obtain the visa no have you ever been removed or deported from any country no all right part five of the security background have you ever withheld u.s custody custody of u.s citizen child no have you voted in the united states in violation no have you ever announced united citizenships no 
RUA Forum Exchange J1. So this is something which you have to pay attention to. If you have ever been a J1 Exchange Visa, then you have to say yes here. If you if you have not, okay. So next one is the temporary work visa information. So remember, we have the VAC number which we already entered. Now here you have to enter your employer information. So name of the employer, U.S. street address, city, state, zip code, phone number, and monthly income. And then you go next review. Name of the person company who filed petition has not been completed. Okay. Name of the person company who filed. Okay. Who filed your basically at one B visa petition. Enter. You can write your name of the company who filed for you. Okay. Enter. And that's it. Now you can go to review. And basically you can review here all the information that you filled out. So make sure everything is correct to the best of your knowledge. And if you want to edit anything, you can go click on the link and edit. Make sure you check all the fields. And then once you have everything done, then you go finally. All the questions. This is all double check review. So location and now it says sign and submit. Okay. Now this is the final step. So basically you have to e-sign here. You have to enter your passport information and the code shown on the right side and once you do that you click on the sign and submit application it will submit your form and after that you will not be able to edit this form so this is the final step so make sure everything is correct and then sign and submit as soon as you submit you will get a confirmation page and that confirmation page is very important because that is the document that you need to carry with you at the time of interview right so that is important but here i will not submit the form because this is just for the demonstration purpose and all the information is fake so i don't want to submit this information okay so i don't i will not submit it but you guys have to submit this form and generate the confirmation id that's all for today this was the first part ds 160 the second part is to go to cga website and book for an appointment for your interview. That I will cover in the separate video part two. Until then, take care, bye.